Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today, a quick look. A quick look at this. It's the Turnergy 1000 FC Plus GPS. It's a flight controller and they call it a autopilot system with GPS. And what do you get? This is the box it comes in. Lovely little plastic jewel case. Already unboxed. Here's the hub of the system, the core unit. It's the little autopilot. It's got obviously accelerometers and gyros. I'm not sure. Maybe it's got both. Maybe it's just got gyros. And it, what it does is it sits between your receiver and your servos. And like a lot of the 3D stabilization systems, this basically just corrects any unwanted movement in your model. So keeps it straight and level. And it has a GPS unit. Now, I don't know why, but it's quite a ruggedly packed GPS unit. Perhaps they're expecting that you're going to smash this. Maybe it's for beginners. I think probably it's oriented at the beginner market because they do make a lot of noise about the, uh, the fact that it will limit your angle of bank and climb and descent to 45 degrees, making it much safer to fly your model if you're just a novice. So that's pretty good if you're you know, just learning to getting to grips with flying models. It'll save you from crashes probably. Um, yeah, but this GPS receiver is encased in plastic, which means it's a bit heavier than you might like and this is also not a not a small unit so it's not as small as some of the stabilization units on the market so you're not going to be throwing this in a very small model it comes with these leads you get four leads which hook it up to your receiver they're quite long so you know if you've got a small model again this would be a quite a squeeze fitting these in but you can buy those shorter leads i think 50 millimeters uh, long for multi-rotor boards so that might be a better option if you've got a really small plane you want to squeeze this in without masses and masses of wire but uh, there you go now it has a, a couple of little options on here these are the gyro adjustments here hang on i'll just zoom in for you and you'll see that you've got three little adjustments here and they even give you this little screwdriver although my goodness it's pretty damn cheap but anyway let you adjust the gain on the gyros that does several things first of all it enables you to set the direction of correction because if you have these little things in the center position then it'll do virtually nothing as you turn it one way then it'll apply gain in one direction if you turn it the other way it'll apply gain in the other direction so it's like reversing the switch so if you've got this all set up so that uh, when the nose of the model goes down the elevator goes up if you turn it the other way then it'll work the wrong way and when the nose of the model goes down the elevator will go down make it even worse so you have to be very careful to check that these gains are all set up properly before you fly the model got some little dip switches up here now these are so you can use it for alternate configurations that might be elevons on a flying wing it might be a v-tail model this just lets you configure the type of model you've got and it's look it's got a lead there you go isn't that wonderful the little gps plugs in the side simple connector and your servos plug in there and it's actually got a separate one for battery but if you i don't know i'll see whether you need to use that maybe the servo leads will provide the power i would think so because if this plugs into your receiver then surely they will have hooked all these in parallel in terms of the plus and minus so the esc or the beck on your model will be providing power for this as well as the rest of the gear okay let's take a little look inside this unit see how well it's made and what the bits are now the top just this is the way the top comes off is four screws holds the two clamshell halves together let's take a closer look as you can see it's a reasonably well laid out board one thing i've noticed which perhaps not the best is they've used a, a tin can crystal these are a bit more susceptible to damage due to high g-forces so if you're going to crash this thing that i would have liked to have seen a surface mount crystal and what does a surface mount crystal look like well i'll show you i've got another board here there's a surface mount crystal here you notice it's much smaller and it's much lower profile so it's less likely to suffer from damage due to g-forces but we've got a tin can one here and obviously that's perhaps a pricing issue i don't know but obviously it's made to a price everything that is that you buy these days is made to a price so you've got to expect some compromises and this is a reasonably cheap unit so you can't complain too much likewise actually this this little coil here if you look at it it is going to be vulnerable to high g-forces because it's quite tall and it's only supported at its base and ferrite's not light so yeah i'm not sure this would have a great deal of survivability and a decent smack but there we go there are the three little pots to adjust the sensitivity and the direction of the gyro responses and there's a little gps connector there a little switch that controls the layout whether it's a v-tail or normal or a elevon system some big tantalum capacitors here just to smooth out the current flow and uh, avoid reduce some of the noise a little reset or a little button here called set i haven't looked at the manual don't know what that is but we'll look at that later on the other side that's where all the the gizmos are and we've got looks like an atmel processor here these are pretty common dime a dozen everyone's using these because they're, they're very good they're cheap easy to write software for so why wouldn't you use it there's a little voltage regulator down here and 
I haven't actually looked at the device numbers and I can't see through the camera, but this will probably be our maybe a six axis gyro accelerometer set up and I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'll have a look when I go home, look it up, see what it actually is. So there you go, soldering, yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's obviously lead free solder because it's, it's not shiny, it's actually kind of dull and that's usually an indicator of lead free. Quite often lead free solder doesn't flow very nicely and it's, it leaves a sort of a dull finish. And Fortunately, the 5 volt bus does seem to run the whole length of the back, so you shouldn't need to use that battery connector to run from your receiver pack. Not a problem, or your the ear, the UBEC that drives your receiver. No problems there. So there you go. Yeah, it's you know construction is okay. It's a bit crooked that switch there, the red switch has been put in a bit crooked, but nah, it's not going to affect the operation. I mean that's you know it's not the best in the world, but it's also not the dearest in the world. Installation should be a breeze because there's really not much to it. Uh, uh, so let's let's take a look. But also in the box you get some instructions and they're printed instructions. Woohoo, how about that? Now it, these look fairly straightforward, but I have to say that, you know, based on uh, on my experience with instructions before, there are probably some errors in here. I'll go through and I'll check them out before I you know, do a final uh, review of this product. I just wanted to introduce it because I saw it on the Hobby King website and I thought, hey, this could be really, really good. Now, one thing I have noted, which I find a bit of a disappointment, is it has five different flight modes which are outlined in the instructions here, but there isn't a disabled mode. So if you're a pilot like myself who likes to actually fly their model, I don't want this thing interfering all the time. Might just want to use this as a sort of a return to home because it has returned to home. That's why it has the GPS. You might want to use this as a safety measure, just so that if the model flies out of range or something happens, it will turn around and fly back. Now, that means I don't want it interfering with the control of my model while I'm actually flying around, doing perhaps crazy things near the ground, wanting lots of throw out of my servos, don't want anything fighting my control inputs. Well, it doesn't look like this is going to be any good because this always has some input. This will always be altering the signals that go to your servos. It might, might be limiting your angle of bank, it might be trying to stabilize things. And to be honest, I don't want that. So it's not what I probably will use, but I'm going to review it because it's probably what a lot of people will want if they're learning to fly models. And as a safety feature, if you're flying FPV, you go out of range, set up your failsafe, this thing should turn your model around, fly it back to where it came from, which is where you're standing. So yeah, that's just a quick look and I'll get on now and uh, do some more stuff, but I shall be testing out a number of these things hopefully very shortly. I've also got the, what is it, the Cyclops Tornado, which is basically this plus an OSD. This doesn't have an OSD by the way, it's simply a flight controller. There's no fancy on-screen display. It doesn't do anything with video. So there you go, if you've got any questions, comments, put them on the bottom of the video and um, stay tuned because there's lots more coming.